Today I'm going to show you guys how you can paint your own bathtub using Rust-Oleum's Marine Coatings Topside Paint and it only cost about $16. I'll share my entire process with you guys from prepping the bathtub beforehand to getting everything painted. This bathroom does not have a window, so I'm also going to show you guys how I set up my ventilation system. I will also link all of the supplies used in this video down in the description box. This is going to be the first video in a series of videos where I show you guys how I'm completely renovating this hallway bathroom myself. Believe it or not, a couple years ago when I first started this project, the bathroom was a lot worse than it is now. I've already pulled down wallpaper. I removed an old cabinet that was hanging above the toilet. I removed the old vinyl flooring and I had painted the vanity and the countertop. I also made these cabinet and drawer pulls, which was actually the first video that I ever posted on this channel. But it's been a couple of years now and those temporary solutions just don't hold up well over long periods of time. So it's time to come back and start completely over and renovate this entire bathroom. The bathtub itself is not in terrible condition, but there's still a lot of prep work that needs to be done before I can actually start painting. There's also some repairs and replacements that need to happen with the fixtures, but that is something I will tackle in the next video. Before you do anything else, you wanna make sure that you've really scrubbed the entire surface down and it's as clean as you can get it with a standard bathtub cleaner. I had already gone over the entire bathtub and the shower surround with Comet and a scrub brush twice before I even started filming. So now that the tub is clean and dry, I'm coming back in with a razor blade and looking for anything that might be stuck to the bathtub that needs to be scraped off. You mainly want to focus on anything that's just stuck to the surface. Don't worry about any stains necessarily, just if you have loose paint like I do on the side over here or any other foreign object that's just stuck to the bathtub and didn't come off with the scrub brush, this is when you wanna get that removed. Once I was done scraping everything off of the surface of the bathtub with the razor blade, I came back in and wiped everything down and then went back in with another tub and tile cleaner and cleaned the surface of the shower one more time. When I was done with that, I rinsed everything off and then I left it long enough to dry. Once it was dry, I grabbed these 120 grit sanding blocks and started sanding the surface of the bathtub. This step is really important to make sure that you get proper adhesion with your paint. I just started at the top and I worked my way down from top to bottom doing one side wall at a time, making sure to get into each and every one of those little nooks and corners so that I didn't have any spots left untouched. You also want to make sure that you are wearing a mask while you're doing this because it does create some dust whenever you're roughing up that surface. The sandpaper also helped to remove a lot of that paint and the wood stain that was on the sides of the shower that the razor blade wasn't able to get. I'm not worried about getting all of the stains removed because the paint will cover that. I just wanted to make sure that anything that could possibly be on the surface of the tub that could cause any adhesion problems comes off while I'm sanding it. Once I was done scuffing up the surface, I went in and rinsed off all the shower walls and then rinsed out the basin of the tub. You want to do a pretty thorough job of rinsing everything off so that you don't have very much dust left to deal with when you come back to wipe everything down before you paint. Once I was done rinsing everything off, I went ahead and left it to dry overnight. The next morning, everything was dry and ready to go. But before I started painting, I needed to set up my ventilation system. Unfortunately, this bathroom does not have any windows, so I don't have a good way to vent the fumes out of this room. 
To solve this problem, I ended up ordering this six inch duct fan and then a 25 foot long vent hose. The closest window to this bathroom is in my bedroom, which is one door over from this bathroom. So I'm going to put this together and run that hose out my bedroom window so it'll suck all of those fumes out of the bathroom and push them outside. I used the box that everything came in to create a little panel to attach to the window in my bedroom. So once I had the car cardboard marked to the length that I needed it to be to fit the width of my window. I just cut it down to size. Then I took the hose and I traced that hose onto the cardboard. Then I used my box cutter and cut the hole out of the cardboard. I double checked that the hose would fit and trimmed off a little bit more to make sure that I could stick the hose all the way through that hole. Then I just used my painter's tape to reinforce the box on the edges where the flaps are to make it sturdy enough to be able to stick it up in my window. Then all I had to do was attach the hose to the fan and then run it out my bedroom window. The fan has markings on it that tell you which way the airflow runs. So I made sure that the airflow was gonna be running into the tube and out of the bathroom and not pushing air into the bathroom. The hose came with two steel clamps. So I used one of those to secure the hose to the end of the fan. Then the other end of the hose is just going to stick right through that hole in the cardboard and I just secured it with tape to that cardboard piece and then I used tape to secure the cardboard piece into the bedroom window. I didn't film that part but here's a picture of the window so you get an idea of how everything is going to be vented out of that bathroom. The last thing I needed to do to create an airtight seal on this room is to hang a piece of plastic up in the doorway. I still wanted to be able to come in and out of the bathroom easily, so I decided to try out one of these dust barrier zippers. It was super easy to install. It just has a paper backing that you peel up a little bit, then you start at the very bottom of the plastic and you just stick the zipper to the plastic. Then as you apply it to the plastic, you peel a little bit more of that backing off until you've worked your way all the way to the top of the zipper. Then when you're done, you just unzip the zipper and you cut that plastic along the middle. And now you have a basically a door and you can easily come and go without having to pull that plastic off of the wall and completely break your seal every time you need to leave the room. Once I was done setting up all of my ventilation, I started working on taping everything off. I started off by taping off the walls and the floor around the outside of the tub. Then I taped all of the fixtures off, making sure that I don't get paint all over them. I'm going to be refinishing the fixtures in my next video, but I don't want to get that white paint all over them and then have to go back and scrape it all off. So along the edges of these fixtures, I just made sure to line the tape up as perfectly along the edge as possible. The two trickier areas to cover were the drain hole and the two little round plates where the handle is mounted to the side of the shower. To make sure that these were covered properly without the tape hanging over onto the surface that I'm wanting to actually paint, I just covered them in tape and then I used my nail to dig into the impression of that circle around that area. And then I took my box cutter and I used that to cut off the excess tape going along that impression that I had created with my nail. That left me with a perfect circle of painter's tape just covering the areas that I needed it to. Now that everything was taped off, the last thing I needed to do before applying my first coat of paint is to wipe everything down with a tack cloth. 
This is just to make sure that any dust left over from scuffing up the surface with the sanding block is completely removed as well as any other dust or anything that could have settled onto your bathtub is completely cleaned up before you start painting. Even after rinsing off the shower, I still removed a fair amount of dust by doing this. Even with a ventilation system set up, you still want to wear a respirator and protect yourself from the harsh fumes. I found this quick release respirator on Amazon, as well as these cartridges, which are specifically rated for dealing with this type of material. I didn't smell anything at all the entire time I was wearing this mask. This paint comes in one quart sized paint cans, and I ordered two just in case I needed more than one to finish this project. This is an oil-based paint, so make sure that you stir it really well before pouring it into your paint tray. And to make cleanup easier, I'm using these disposable trays so I can just throw it away when I'm done with this first coat. To apply the paint, I'm using a four inch foam roller. I also picked up some of those little foam paint brushes to use in any of the harder to reach areas that I can't get into with the actual roller. You could also use just those cheap chip paint brushes, but I was worried those would leave brush marks, so I just stuck with the foam. To apply the paint, I just did one side of the shower wall at a time, starting at the top and then working my way down towards the bottom. You want to apply the paint in fairly thin and even layers. You would always be better off to have to do more coats than to apply it too thick and not have the paint properly dry and cure. This paint is also self-leveling, which is pretty amazing because any textured look that I could see on the wall that's just naturally occurring from the foam roller itself was completely gone by the time I was done painting and the first coat had dried. But if you had any run marks or any thick lines from applying too much paint at a time, those are not going to level themselves out. So I just continued to take my time and apply that first coat in a thin layer across the entire shower. Once I got to the basin of the bathtub, I applied it pretty much the exact same way, just taking a little bit more time and being extra careful where the curved areas of the tub are. I started along the back of the bathtub and applied the paint starting up at the top edge and then around the side walls before painting the bottom of the tub. This was pretty easy. I just had to be careful not to leave any lines in the curved areas because those seemed to be the only place where I really had any difficulty with lines occurring along the edge of my roller. At this point, I would like to mention how easy this paint was to work with. It has a really nice consistency and it only took me 30 minutes to roll out this entire tub and shower. One of the reasons I went with this instead of the tub and tile kit is a lot of people saying that the tub and tile kit would start to get really tacky and hard to work with about halfway through because it's setting up after mid mixing the part A and part B together. But with this paint, the consistency is just like normal paint and it didn't get tacky or become difficult to work with at any point in time. This paint
paint has to dry for 24 hours in between coats. So at this point, I was done for the day. But you can already see the dramatic transformation after just one coat of this paint. So 24 hours later, I came back in to check on the paint and it's completely dry. Before applying the second coat, I'm going to go over the entire surface with a 220 grit sanding block. You don't want to sand anything down too rough. You just want to lightly go over the entire surface just to knock down any bumps and slightly rough up the surface so that you get better adhesion with that second coat of paint. Then as soon as you're done going over everything with that sanding block, you want to take another tack cloth and wipe the entire surface down, making sure to get every last bit of dust removed from the surface. Once you're done with that tack cloth, you can go ahead and get started on your second coat. Everything you do on the second coat is just going to be a repeat of the first coat. The second coat was all I really needed to cover the original bathtub color and to give me that bright white finish. And the shower walls looked perfect by the time I was done with those, but the old paint stains in the bottom of the bathtub really needed a third coat. They were pretty well covered by the second coat, but I felt like I could still see that it was there. So the next day I decided to go ahead and apply a third coat to the entire surface. So however many coats you need is really going to depend on your own individual circumstances. After the last coat dried for 24 hours, I came back in to remove the painter's tape and this is how my bathtub turned out. I'm really impressed by these results and honestly it's better than I thought it would be. The paint dries to a really hard enamel like finish that has a really nice high gloss look to it. We still have to let this cure for three days before we can start using this bathtub again but I'll make sure to give you guys an update down the road on how well it holds up. In the next video, I'm going to be tackling these fixtures because now that the bathtub looks amazing, the fixtures look absolutely terrible. Then I still have the rest of the bathroom to renovate. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, ring that bell for notifications so you don't miss any future content on this channel. And do me a huge favor and hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, check out one of these videos linked right here.